Hi everyone, my name is Frank Westfall and in this video I will show you how to bypass the new Windows 11 TPM requirement and run Windows 11 on a computer with no TPM or TPM version 1.2. Basically this will allow you to run Windows 11 on any PC laptop or desktop computer that is 2013 or newer. The only new Windows 11 requirement that there is no way to get around is that the system BIOS or the system firmware must support UEFI boot mode. In this video, I'll show you how to switch to UEFI boot mode if your system isn't already set to that, and then install Windows 11 while bypassing the new TPM requirement, as well as the other new Windows 11 requirements if you want to bypass those as well. If you're new to this channel, please hit the like button and please subscribe. I was an IT engineer for eight years and I have many more computer tutorial videos coming. I'm gonna get right into the configuration here, but if you want to know a little bit more about TPM in general for a contextual understanding of it, I do a basic breakdown of it at the end of this video, so stick around if you want to learn more about what TPM is and what it does. For this video, you will need two things. A PC computer that is 2013 or newer and supports UEFI boot mode in the system firmware, which is commonly called the system BIOS, and a USB drive with a bootable Windows 11 factory image on it. If you need to learn how to make the USB bootable drive, I show exactly how to make this in one of my other videos called How to Create USB Flash Thumb Drive from ISO Image File Windows 11. And the link for that other video will be in the description below. All right, here we go. Here's the problem. As you can see, I have UEFI boot mode enabled. I have my USB installation disk installed in the computer. I'm going to exit BIOS, power on the computer, hit F12. And I wanna see preparing a one-time boot menu. This can vary depending on the brand of computer, but they're all capable of doing the same thing. I'm going to select my USB disk, which has Windows 11 on it and is bootable. Now I'm loading the Windows 11 operating system from the USB disk onto the computer in a temporary installation environment. I'm gonna attempt to install Windows 11. I'm not using a product key for the purpose of this demonstration. I want Windows 11 Pro. And here's the error message. This PC cannot run Windows 11. This PC does not meet the minimum system requirements to install this version of Windows. For more information, visit blah, blah, blah. Okay, so when we're at this window, here's how we bypass this. Hit Shift F10, get a command prompt, type in regedit.exe, regedit.exe. Navigate to H key local machine slash system slash setup right click the setup folder go to new key name this key l a b c o n f i g double click it right click in this open space and go to new and then go to d word 32-bit value name this bypass tpm check Set this value to one. Hit OK. Now you can also add other keys to bypass RAM check and bypass secure boot check. I'm gonna add those just to show you how they're also added. They're added in the same location. So you just create another D word value. Name this one, bypass RAM check. Click it, give it a value of one. Create another D word value and name this one bypass secure boot check. Double click this, give it a value of one. Okay, you can close this, close this, and you can cancel out of this. Are you sure you want to quit? Yes. This is not actually gonna restart the computer. It's gonna allow us to restart the installation without restarting the computer and without losing the edits that we just made to the temporary installation media's registry. 
Now we're going to install it again. Skipping the key again. Selecting the version. Next. So this is where we got the error last time. Now we don't have the error. We can continue with the installation. We have bypassed the Windows 11 requirements. We're going to do a custom install. Again, I always recommend clean installs. I am going to remove all the partitions on this drive. The operating system installation will create whatever partitions it needs. So I always just delete all the existing partitions until you're down to just the system drive. Next. And now it's installing Windows 11. Okay, so the installation has completed. I'm just gonna finish it up real quick. United States, US keyboard layout, no second layout. I'll connect to my wireless network. It's gonna look for some updates. And so just as a side note, when you're doing operating system installs, always get the operating system installation image directly from the manufacturer. This is a Microsoft operating system and I downloaded it directly from Microsoft. That's what's called a factory image. It's perfectly clean. There's no third party software in it. It's just the operating system exactly the way Microsoft intended it directly from Microsoft. You always wanna get your software directly from the manufacturer so it hasn't been modified in any way. I'm just gonna name this laptop. This is for personal use. I don't wanna use a Microsoft account. I wanna use a local account. So. I'm going to use what's called an offline account. That just means that when I log into the computer, I'm not authenticating to a Microsoft server. I'm authenticating to this specific computer. It doesn't require an internet connection and my login information isn't stored anywhere except on this computer. It's not available online anywhere. Uh, we're just going to skip this. They're trying to get us to do a Microsoft online account. We don't want that. I'm going to enter my name and I'm just going to enter a password. You always want to use complex passwords, even for your own computer. In case it's ever lost or stolen, it minimizes the probability that someone will be able to log into it. And again, if you have the option to enable BitLocker disk encryption on a laptop, because laptops often get lost or stolen, I highly recommend encrypting your hard disk using BitLocker disk encryption. But at the very minimum, do a complex password. Confirm the password. Do some security questions. But when you're doing this, you should do real security questions in case you ever get locked out of your operating system, you'll have a way to get back in. Now for these, I always turn this stuff off. It's gonna increase the bandwidth that your device uses and slow it down. Like advertising ID, do you wanna be advertised to on your own computer? I certainly don't. All right, here we are. This is Windows 11. We're online with the internet and this thing's ready to use. As you can see, we bypassed the new Windows 11 system requirements and we're running Windows 11 without any issues on hardware that is 2013 or newer. This particular computer was manufactured in the end of 2013. So this one's right on the line and here I am running Windows 11 on it, no problem. Just get a website. There we are. File Explorer, all that stuff. If you found this helpful, please subscribe to my channel for more computer tutorial videos and other videos as well. Before ending, I'll share that additional information about TPM if you're curious about what it is and what it does. So what is TPM? TPM is actually a physical chip called a TPM security chip, which is typically integrated into the motherboard of a computer. And a TPM chip can run the firmware versions 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 
or 2.0, depending on when the chip was made. If a TPM chip is present, it can be turned on or off in the system BIOS, also called system firmware. Windows 11 now requires TPM 2.0, to install the Windows 11 operating system. But not all computers have a TPM chip, and some have a TPM chip that will only run TPM firmware version 1.2, like me, for example, on this Dell Latitude E6430 laptop. It does have a TPM chip, but it can only support TPM firmware version 1.2. So if you've heard people talk about TPM 2.0 and Windows 11, this is what they're talking about. What does the TPM chip actually do? The TPM chip stores the operating system login credentials and the BitLocker encryption key if BitLocker with TPM is enabled. And then the TPM chip grants the operating system access to this information when the computer is started up. Now, TPM can do more than this, but in most cases, this is what it's doing. Basically, the TPM chip works like an integrated two-factor authentication device. As long as the computer hardware hasn't been modified, the TPM chip will grant access to the password and if applicable, the BitLocker encryption key and the operating system will start up successfully. But if you pull the system disk, commonly referred to as the hard drive or the C drive out of a TPM enabled computer and you try to boot the operating system on that drive in another computer, you will not be able to start the operating system. And if you have BitLocker disk encryption enabled, it will not be possible to read anything on that disk at all. Why should I even think about TPM? The short answer is that if you want to run Windows 11, you have to think about TPM because you either have to enable TPM or bypass the requirements as I showed earlier. In the pre-releases of Windows 11, TPM was still optional, but in the general release, TPM 2.0 is a requirement. But this is a problem because for many users, there is little risk of their computers being lost or stolen. And even if they do get stolen, not everyone has sensitive information on their computers. So for a lot of people, the additional security of a TPM chip is not needed. And it's just a problem if you want to run Windows 11 on a computer that doesn't have a TPM chip. So that's why I showed you how to bypass the requirements in this video. But because I always consider security in the equation, I will say that if you have a laptop and you do have sensitive information on it, I highly recommend enabling TPM if it's an option to you and also using BitLocker disk encryption. This is a guarantee that if the laptop is ever lost or stolen, the information on the hard drive or the system drive cannot be read at all because they're encrypted. I'll cover how to turn on BitLocker disk encryption in another video soon. So that's TPM in a nutshell. Again, thank you for watching this video. Please leave any questions you have in the comment section and I will answer them. And please subscribe if you haven't already. Bye for now.